Today we've got a great malicious compliance story against somebody that tried to make another person feel incompetent. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, if I don't like it, I can find another job? Okay. I think this qualifies. I worked at a small shop serving as an electrical apprenticeship. Myself and the shop manager had a few run-ins, and I assume he disliked me as much as I disliked him. I had refused to do a job and told him he didn't pay me enough. It was at the stockyards and I was expected to put on a set of waders, crawl down into a raw fat reclamation tank, and replace a submersible pump. Wasn't going to happen. Another time he wanted me to lie to a customer to make an issue they were having sound like it wasn't our fault. I refused and told him if he wanted to lie about it, he was going to have to drive out to the job site and do it himself. He told me to keep my mouth shut and did come out. I think the only reason he didn't fire me was I was by far one of the most efficient and versatile employees. This fact had me questioning how much I was getting out of this apprenticeship and was passively looking around for another shop to apprentice at. My wage scale was structured and I got regular raises bringing me closer to journeyman's level over my time as an apprentice. So I had time to find someone that would sign up to complete my apprenticeship as well as want to hire me. One of our better journeymen had gone to another shop and had introduced me to the owners. We talked about what it would take to get me to move. Things were progressing but nothing committed to at that point. Cue the malicious compliance. It's my evaluation and raise time. My manager calls me up to the conference room and explains that due to my performance and the shop being in a slow period, he was not going to give me the 25 cents an hour raise as my contract said, but was going to give me a dollar more an hour once I became a journeyman. We argued and I told him if I can't trust you for a quarter, why would I believe the dollar? The argument ended in him telling me, if you don't like it, you can always quit. Oh really? I picked up the conference room phone on the table in front of us and called the shop I'd been talking with. I asked the owner if I brought my tools over today, would I have a job? After a quick and uncomfortable discussion with his partner, he said yes. I informed my manager, I resigned effective now. I loaded up my tools, punched out, and went straight to work that afternoon. I think if you're a hard worker and you're a good hard worker, you deserve to be compensated properly and you should not put up with any of that nonsense. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit that subscribe button down below. That said, our next story is, this stuff's gonna cease. This happened about 4 years ago and I've been itching to share it here recently. I used to work for Big Brown as a delivery driver. At the time, I still was a cover driver, which is essentially a full-time driver without a permanent route. Every day, you'd go in not knowing what part of the city you'd be delivering to. It sucked. I had started to get dispatched to a pretty nice area regularly, since the regular driver was out for a few months, and felt like I was hitting my groove. I could tell with pretty decent accuracy how long my day would be, just by looking at the stop count and the route was just outside of the city in what we all considered the countryside. So it was beautiful too. I was really starting to enjoy it. Then in comes Sizzleburger. Not his actual name, but it sounds so similar that we called him that. Sizzle was a cover driver like me, but he had about a year of seniority on me. That meant that he was allowed to choose which route he wanted to take, based on who ranked lower than him. The rules about this were always weird, like when I would try to do it, management would push back and say that I wasn't allowed even though it's in our contract. Sizzle was also very full of himself. He looked like a wannabe mob boss from the Sopranos, and whenever he was mad about his route, he would file a grievance and come out and say, this crap's gonna cease. We didn't get along since he was, you know, a complete jerk to everyone. The day finally comes when Sizzle decides he doesn't like that I'm running the cushy route, and he's tired of the one right next to it which really wasn't that bad. I'd looked at the dispatch list and I did a little time calculation, so I knew that I could finish his route faster than I could the cushy route. So I patiently complied and went to work. It's getting towards the end of the day. I had maybe 5 stops left when I get a call from my supervisor. They say, hey OP, you're really not going to like this, but I need you to go take 30 stops off Sizzleburger because he has 70 stops left. I say, you've got to be kidding me. You know he bumped me from that route this morning? 
They say, I know, I know, he's been on our last nerve with the grievances, so just go take the stops and I promise you won't get bumped by him again. I knew he must have gone out on the route and at some point realized that he'd picked the worst route for the day based on stop count, but to have 70 stops left at around 7 o'clock meant that he'd been sitting on his butt for half the day. But again, I complied and went up to meet with Sizzle. I pull up to his truck, butt to butt, and open the door. Immediately, I'm hit with a smell like walking into a bar at 2am when all the beer is drying up on the floor. I look at him and he's obviously drunk, an alcoholic drunk, like he thinks he can hide it, but his eyes were so bloodshot it was just pathetic. I say nothing while he tries to play down the fact that I'm helping him on the route he bumped me from. I take my boxes and leave. If this was another job, I might not feel so passionate about this, but as a truck driver, I have zero tolerance for anyone getting behind the wheel intoxicated, especially a death machine like those box trucks. After I left, I called my buddy who was another driver, with a lot of seniority, and asked what I should do. He says he'll call the supervisor and that I should finish the stops I had. About 10 minutes later, I get a call from the supervisor again. They say, hey, we know what's going on and I just wanted to let you know Sizzleburger will no longer be working for us. We've been waiting for actual proof that he's been drinking on the job and you just gave it to us. So good job. And we're sending two more guys to split up the route. In his own words, this crap's gonna cease. In a way, I kind of feel bad for the guy. I mean, I think you're probably in it pretty badly if you get to the point where you're like, no, I'm not drunk, trying to cover it up, while clearly gone. Our next story is, want me to be on the job by 8.30? Okay. This takes place over the past two months, and without going into too many details about my work, here's my story. I work in a large metro city on a team that does maintenance on our infrastructure, keeping our plant running and keeping our customer services running. We all have a company truck that we take home every day and start our days at 7.30 every morning, five days a week. Now, I live the furthest from our service area, 45 minutes to an hour drive without traffic, and there's always traffic. That being said, some days it takes me two and a half hours to get to my first job in the mornings. My supervisor knows this and was okay with it, as long as I was en route to my first job by 7.30. Then we had a restructuring of the big bosses. They wanted us on our first job by 8.30. I emailed my supervisor about it and he assured me that I was fine and he was aware of my drive time in. A few weeks pass and he tells me that the new big bosses aren't happy about my arrival times in the mornings and that I'd need to leave earlier. I asked him to email that to me so I can remember to set my alarm earlier. I really asked for it emailed to me so I'd have documentation. He does. Now I'm kind of pissed because I don't want to have to get up earlier and not get paid to drive into our area, so I start looking into our policies. Our policy on time recording is pretty strict and states if we're operating company equipment, my truck, we are working. So I start leaving at 6 every morning giving me ample time to get to my first job by 8.30 and starting my time as soon as I started my truck, giving me an hour and a half of overtime every day. Now, I knew something was going to be said about this, and when my supervisor showed up on me, asking me why I was clocking that overtime every morning before my shift, I handed him his email telling me to leave earlier and the attendance policy with the section highlighted. He looks up to me, grinning from ear to ear, and compliments me on finding a loophole in the big boss's new rule. I haven't had another thing said to me about my overtime, or anything else about me not being on the job by 8.30. I'm still not happy about waking up earlier, but the seven and a half hours of overtime a week is nice. I mean, yeah, it sucks to get up even earlier, but if you're getting paid for it, you're getting paid for it. This next story is, Christmas Karen wants boneless chicken breast. This is a few years back, but working this holiday season, I retold the story to co-workers and felt this was a good place to post. To preface, I'm a career butcher and at the time was working for the food hole. If anyone isn't familiar, the meat department becomes crazy around November and doesn't abate until after Christmas. We took holiday orders in person then, now mostly all online unless they're odd, 
As you might imagine, the orders are usually for standing rib roasts, tenderloins, hams, turkeys, and ducks and geese. They really add up, and for my boss, sorting all the paper orders is a nightmare. Enter Karen. I would like to place a holiday order. I get the relevant info and say, cool, what would you like on the 24th? She says, one pound of boneless chicken breast. I said, oh, no problem. You actually don't need to order that. We have plenty of regular chicken, steaks, and burger. You only need to place an order for roasts, etc. She said, I had to wait forever last year. This year, I don't want to wait, so I'll order it. I say, we'll have two lines, so if you're coming to just get regular items, you won't need to wait in the order line. She says, but I want to make sure. At this point, I was already way done, so I decided I would comply maliciously. I took her order and then proceeded to inform every single person in my department of the situation and the plan. The day of, she came up, told the guy at the counter she wanted chicken breast. Having been warned by me, he asked, did you pre-order it? She says yes. Coworker says, okay, let me go search through the sheet to find your order. She says, you can just grab it from the case. They say, no, we already have yours put away. I'll find it. I wouldn't want it to get lost in the cooler and go bad over Christmas. Karen, frustrated, says, okay. Coworker goes to find our order book, searches through and finds her name and says, okay, I found you on the list, now I just have to find your order. Coworker enters cooler and, as trying to find a pack of chicken breasts in a cooler full of roasts, is like trying to find a needle in a haystack, it took him about 15 minutes. At multiple points through the ordeal, Other employees greeted her. She tried to get them to get her chicken breast and they all told her, because I'd warned them, that she had to wait for the ones specifically put aside for her. I estimate that she waited almost 30 minutes, including line time, to get to our counter. I'm not gonna lie though, I kind of don't blame her. I think OP's being a little too screw the customer. If you want to go out of your way and make sure that they have that in stock, why should you be given a hard time for that? This next story is funny. I thought I was incompetent. One of my previous jobs was a very toxic workplace because the CEO was an absolute nut job, micromanaged everyone and always wanted perfection. My role was twofold and therefore required me to work very closely with him a big chunk of the time. I didn't mind the perfection bit as I'm a perfectionist myself, very meticulous and have a keen eye on detail. It's the micromanaging part I couldn't stand. This one time we had a big media event where we were launching a new partnership. Having extensive experience with local media and knowing the requirements in terms of branding placement, etc., I knew what was needed for such an event. So I set up and even asked some of my media pals to confirm whether it was all visible in cameras. All was in order. Everyone was happy. Anyways, my boss comes in a whole hour earlier than expected and decides to micromanage and take setup matters into his own hands. I had stepped aside to welcome some guests, so imagine my shock when I came back to find them rearranging everything while screaming in front of everyone that we were incompetent and hadn't done it right. What did I hire you for if I'm going to end up doing it myself is a common phrase he used all the time. I tried to explain the reasoning behind the placement, but he wouldn't let me get a word in. He then proceeded to tell me to leave everything as he had said it and let the other team deal with the rest of the event. I complied and removed myself from the event altogether since I was so incompetent. I went to stand at the back and didn't help out again for the remainder of the event, as per his request. Fast forward to when the coverage came out and everyone was asking why our branding wasn't visible. I told them all to take it up with my boss directly. See, I know from working closely with him that he doesn't like embarrassment and will do literally anything to avoid it. So having our shareholders, other high profile stakeholders and media asking him directly about this was a very embarrassing situation for him. Let's just say that day he would only show up to events right at the start time. He also told me to draft a policy that everyone company-wide had to follow, including him. When I finally had enough and quit, he said that he was sad to be losing such great talent. Funny, I thought I was incompetent. 
I can only imagine how frustrated at the core OP must have felt here. Just imagine doing all of this work the way you know it should be done, only for somebody to come in and trash it all, tear it all down. At least they were the ones that had to deal with the embarrassment of it. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.